Today, we're going to go from this to this and even this in just a few steps. So let's kick off with a practical example. We'll be using the mesh tool. This one just up here. We can use this in either 2D or in 3D. To show a 3D example, let's click once. And for the geometry method, let's select rectangular and we'll just click again. Now we'll notice it's just disappeared, but this is because we haven't typed in any dimensions yet. So if we click and select over that area, we'll find that it's still here. And to show how we can quickly manipulate the mesh in 3D, I'll give us a little example. Let's select a point on our pet palette. We'll go to elevate mesh point and we'll bring that one up and we'll click again. Let's do that with the other back point and just lift it. So we'll drag that out of the way. It's just in line with the other point. And like that, we've already got a simple little wedge. So with these tools, we can quickly and intuitively create rough topography within the 3D space. Let's say we've brought in a survey that we want to do our topography with. This blue line is going to be the boundary of the property. And these lines across are going to be our contours. Contours are the different heights across a site, starting with our low points down here up to a high point up here. Let's use the site mesh tool in 2D, just the same as we did in 3D. We can click and drag from one side of the boundary to the other, or as a little shortcut, we can just hold in space bar, click on the outside of the boundary. And with that, if we hit escape and click, we've got our site mesh in 2D. Now let's say we want to type in some of the heights for some of these contours. We'll select our site mesh and holding in alt, the eyedropper tool will come up. We'll select the mesh again. We'll hold in space bar, just like we did for the exterior. And this time we'll hover over the top of the contour. We'll click once and a prompt will come up. From here, it'll ask us to add new points, which will just go OK. And from here, it's essentially traced down across our contour, which will give us nodes to be able to manipulate the height at those points on the mesh. So let's just do a quick example. Let's go into this point here to in the pet palette, elevate mesh point. Let's type in 1500. Now we want all those heights along that contour to be the same. So we'll go apply to all. We'll go OK. Now from here, let's go into 3D and check it out. Cool. So we've got our 1.5 that's been typed in. So what I'll do, I'll go through, type in the rest of these measurements. I'll give one more example. Holding in spacebar, I'll click on this contour here. We'll go OK. We'll click on one of the nodes. We'll type in 2000 and go apply all. We'll go into 3D and we've got that contour there. I'll finish off these last ones and share the results. So I've just typed in all of our measurements. Let's go into the 3D and there we go. We've got a sloping block. Now for those little exterior points just here, here and here, let's go back in. Let's. I'll set these as one meter at the low point, one meter one meter and for this back point i'll set them as six thousand just as an estimate on a real topography we'd have heights at those points as well that we'd reference from the survey now when you're setting a point on the edge of a contour you don't want to hit apply all otherwise it'll set all of the boundary contours to that height and it's going to mess things up so we'll just go okay Look at our 3D and we've got our contoured wedge. I'll give an example of what it might look like if we actually apply all on one of those side boundaries. Let's go say 3000, apply all, we'll go okay. We'll go into our 3D and we'll notice how around the perimeter, it's all set it to that three meters. So just something to watch out for. I'll hit undo. Let's go back into our 3D, much better. So the wedges are nice and simple and using these techniques, we should be able to take a survey and type in accurate information that can represent the site and all the various heights in 3D using the mesh. Let's say we've got something that's not just a wedge shape, but more mountainous contours like this. Let's do our final example. You may have seen contours like this on a map, maybe at a national park. And here we're going to be able to accurately create what it would look like in 3D. So to kick off, I'll select the site mesh tool. I'll click and drag over this area. And just using the same technique as before, let's click holding an alt, clicking space, and we'll create point. We'll do this for each of the contours as we go up and through. We can pretty quickly do this by just holding in space bar and pressing enter. And with that, we're pretty much finished. So if we go into our 3D, we still won't have anything because we don't have any heights typed in. So let's go back in. Let's go to our first contour, number one, type in 1000, apply all. I'll just type in the rest of these contours and I'll come back in a sec when I'm finished. And final one, 9000, we'll go okay. I'll type in a number for our perimeter here as well. We'll just go 1000 as well. We'll go okay. Well, let's go into our 3D. Hey, there we go. And we've got our cool, topography. But if you'd like to get some practice in yourself and you'd like this ArchiCAD file with these mock-up contours, make sure to check out my Patreon page, which I'll link down below in the description. It's where I put all my ArchiCAD files, adding new ones with each tutorial. Having project files saves a massive amount of time and stress with setup, and I can't recommend them highly enough. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to check out this one over here.